Conqueror Clash, day two. Let's get going. Unfortunately, my plugin is not exactly showing me everybody, but we do see some basic information here. So I'm going to show you the Professor plugin real quick. Just gonna flash this screen. Here you see the ELOs of Team EZW. They are a tier one team today, I believe, so they are getting into it. And in two minutes, we're going to be jumping into game one. So here's hoping everything today goes as smoothly as yesterday, if not a, a little bit better. Um, yesterday was a little bit too much of a clown fiesta for my tastes. So let's hope today everything goes a little bit more smoothly. I wouldn't mind if it was just as scuffed. It was actually pretty fun doing all the other extra stuff. But maybe let, let's just keep it clean today. Three games, minimal break in between. We'll scream, we'll cast stuff, and at the end, we'll give a big hurrah, whatever placement these guys get, and we'll just live with it. So, a minute 30 out, we're going to be getting into game one. So yesterday, Team EZW wins the first game, gets a buy through the second one because the crash broke, well, crash, ha! <laughs> clash, or crash, broke. So they got a buy into the grand finals, where they unfortunately did lose and take second place. So today, the only way they could actually improve that record is if they go ahead and just win the whole thing. That would require them to win three games in a row. So the lineup for game one is going to be Jen Senna bottom lane. We're going to have a Fiddlesticks top, uh, Volibear jungle, Vladimir mid. Heading up against Kled top, bottom lane is Lucian Leona, mid lane, Malzahar, and jungle Zack. Pretty standard rolls all around, and we're going to see who comes out ahead in game one of Conqueror Clash. So the, unlike most other Clash Cups, I believe Conqueror Clash only lasts for two days instead of four. So I don't believe there will be another one in a few weeks time. Th there will be a different Clash. But this is the one with more rewards. This is the one where if you bought a premium ticket, you get more skins. So the stakes are a little bit higher here. I'm sure both teams here are gonna give it all to uh, take it away here. So 15 seconds from now, we're gonna get into the game. So everybody sit comfortable. Ten seconds out. Get a get your get some water, stay hydrated, and we're gonna get into it. Drinking water beside the mic. <laughs> Alright. Game one. I do have to rearrange the scoreboard yet again. I do apologize if you hear screaming. It's not from my house. Uh, I'm keeping a window open to uh, let some air in. And there are kids playing outside my house over in the playground. Because yesterday when I was casting so much, it got really hot in my room. Because I closed my doors. I tried to isolate myself in my room so to minimize outside noise. But what ended up happening was uh, it got really hot. My computer started to heat up as the cast went on and on and OBS kept running and I was sitting still for like two or three hours I did take like a 10 minute break in between because you know clash the break I probably won't get that luxury against today I probably won't have a break today but uh it got really hot and it got really uncomfortable so today I opened the window to uh let some fresh air in it's actually pretty chilly today compared to yesterday as well. It's a nice little breeze. It's really, it's a really cold breeze. It's not even like cool or comforting or whatever. It's a really cold breeze uh, coming in from the outside. So for now, it's actually a little bit, it's actually a little bit chilly. But I'm sure as the game heats up and as you know my computer and therefore me heat up, uh, the cold breeze will be very much appreciated. But for now, the loading screen has hit 100%. We're going to get ready and get into game one. Lucian, Leona, Clad, Malzahar, Zack. What an interesting lineup. All right, let's get into it. It is not the Piltover Clash. I cannot believe you will not say the Conqueror Clash. Pretty standard buys all around here. 
And uh, before I forget, let me just rearrange the scoreboard. Oh, we just hear the trotting of a horse in the background. Thirty seconds out, the game will begin proper. Oh, what is this? It seems like red team. They are planning a deep invade. Oh, this seems like the exact same scenario in game one of yesterday's matches. The exact same scenario playing out. Where red team is going for a deep invade slash early word. A three man coming top, trying to collapse onto blue team's top laner, but blue team's top laner is nowhere to be seen. But he will walk over a ward. There is a deep ward here. They will spot this out. As he crosses the jungle here, the jungler from Red Team will recall to swap to Sweeper Lens very early on. Now Blue Team's cores are rotating as well. They are actually going for a blue start and this will be spotted out on the ward. And it's going to be a red side of start, well top side of start rather for both teams here. A deep ward in the banana brush. And the deep ward in the blue buff rush. And the game will now begin. So both top laners will be leashing. Klet might be a little bit late to lane. He did stay a little bit longer. But here comes the level 1. The Leon is walking up. The stun onto the Senna. The ignite lands immediately. And that is going to force out the Senna flash very early on. And this is in fact the Lasality. Send a build, there is no grasp, but there is no sustain through autos. You do have to rely on your Q for sustain. This is the Glacial Augment variant, where instead of building tankier, you build Lasality instead. The grasp version of Senna has been seeing more and more popular play as time goes on. And now the Fiddle top lane, trading up against the Klet rather nicely. I will say the Team EZW has not had a thrilling track record with Klet top, uh, not Klet top, uh, Fiddle 6 top. I believe every single game of top Fiddle has resulted in a loss for blue team. But regardless, top Fiddle is still at the end of the day a very strong uh, solo lane pick in terms of team fighting utility. It seems like EZW themselves have yet to find a really convincing way to make it work. And there it is, Leona hits level 2, the Zenith Blade is coming in, the exhaust onto the center. One more hit will do it, but the beautiful two-man stun preventing them from closing any more distance. The Senna will make it out with her life, and here comes the Volibear forcing out the Lucian's flash and his exhaust as well. No more combat summoners down here for red team and the Leona coming back in, she's so low, one more bullet will do it but the Senna, she's walking back in, can she survive? No, she cannot, first blood over to the Zac. the teleport is coming down as well, flash forward to kill off the AD carry here by the Jin. the Zac has been blobbed up, the Leona is low, oh no, the, the Volibear bear walks up so far, he gets shot down by a tower, a very unnecessary death, but regardless, it is the Jin who walks away with two kills, meanwhile top lane, the Kled, he does get killed off. Well, no, he doesn't get killed off. He does kill off the Fiddlesticks, is what I meant. The solo kill up top. So overall, a 2 for 3 exchange. However, it is the Jin laughing all the way to the bank. One more bullet, he does do it. A 3 for 3. Jin gets all 3 kills. Beautiful job by the bot laners. But the jungler and top lane have both made their fair share of missteps here for the blue team. This really could have been the 3 for 2, really. A senseless death by the Volibear, and it is quite crippling to him in this current situation as well. The Volibear will have to contend with no double buffs because he lost them so early on. He's resuming his jungle route, and the Zac, he's posturing top lane. The Fiddlesticks needs to try to watch out. He's about a mini wave ahead of the Kled in terms of CS, but he still needs to watch himself. Very squishy right now. Kled has natural grievous wounds in his kit as well. It might be difficult for Fiddle to fight into him as time progresses. Oh, he needs to be careful here. Here comes the slingshot. The knockup catches the Fiddle through the flash. And now he just has to quietly walk away. He can drain himself back up to full health. But he lost his flash and that's gotta hurt. No teleport, no flash. For either top laners. Hmm, it's up to Kled to make something happen once again. The Leona walking back in, perhaps a little bit too awkward a route. 
Chain is there. She's sitting still for a solid four seconds. Here comes the Volo Bear, but he can't make a gank happen. He has to try to back off. The Jin has actually been taken quite low here. He needs to back off. Fido is going to D word from over the wall, killing off a Squire's Bloom. But there's the Zack, he's just gonna come back. And did he reward? Nope. He is, however, going for the counter jungle. The Wall Bear is on the other side of the map. He's not gonna make it up here. He's just go so the Zack is just gonna go away with the Gromp in hand. Zack is such a potent jungle pick, so much disruption, so much tankiness when team fights break out. Oh, Fiddle, good juke. Onto the bear trap. He's actually got the minion wave held to a really good spot. But the drain spam is not doing the best. Okay, there it is. He's still draining it out. He wants to send out the wave. But by drain spamming, he's actually not getting that much CS, but he did dismount the clad just purely through collateral damage, really. Still getting a fair share of CS for himself. The Kled, uh, still a full minion wave behind. He has a solo kill to speak for himself, but he's yet to pick up anything powerful enough to really disrupt the fiddle here. And as the game goes on, as you get your tank fiddlesticks more and more online, when he gets more income, gets more armor and MR items, he becomes a legitimate threat, even if he doesn't do any damage items, except for, I don't know, maybe Abyssal Mask, we'll count that one. The Crowstorm Fear is still such a big deal that it should not be underestimated. Now let's evaluate the other lanes. Right now, bot lane for blue team is quite a bit ahead, but it's almost all being equalized by the jungle matchup here. As a result, we do have an essentially dead even game. But that is not going to be dead even anymore, as the Zack pulls off a very flawless gank. Even the Malzahar wanders down here to get something to happen, but he, his presence isn't really needed. Lucian does find himself a double kill. Oh, he missed the cannon. Ooh, that's that's got a sting. Red team does secure their first trick off of that beautiful gank into the double kill. Eight minutes in, Harold has spawned. It is on the table here. Can they make anything happen? Probably not. Neither jungler is really in position to take that right now. The fiddle is going to take Grom for himself, but the Grom, oh, he actually does quite, he kind of hurts if the fiddle doesn't have a jungle item. The drain will sustain himself for now. He's just helping himself to a little bit of additional supplementary income and the Kled actually goes back to buy a null magic mantle. I'm not sure about that choice. I think in this situation finishing a Warhammer is a little bit better. The Fiddle really doesn't really threaten you that much. He doesn't do a lot of damage per se. Unless he's going for an early Merc Shreds, I don't agree with the non-magic pickup as well as much as just finishing an intermediate item, just getting a Warhammer. Or even a Phage. The Clad Wallet tendencies will not get anything here. He does secure the cannon, but the Fiddlesticks does not. He's actually last hit more cannons than the fiddle right now. And there is the crow storm. It's coming in. The Kled does get dismounted. Scarl runs for the hills. The drain is coming in. Kled needs to try to get himself out. But there is the problem of playing a tank into the Kled. You do not do enough damage to him before he gets the remount. And the fiddlesticks learns that the hard way as the Zack comes in to punish him. And there it is, the Senna. She's going to get stunned up. The CC chain is landing. The shroud is being detected by Leona's body. And now the Jin is alone. He's loading the four shot into the chamber. But can he make anything happen? Here comes the Wolo Bear. He tries to get a pounce, but he's just gonna crash down instead. There's no more stun, no more CC, except for the Deadly Flourish. It will connect onto the Leona, but the Calling is driving them back. But there is the puke on the mid lane as well. The Vladimir, he's gonna be next on the chopping block. He does pull away, but the flash from the Zac following him through with the last bounce, getting that ultimate kill. That's gonna be the fourth over to Zac and over, oh, across the map. Eight kills to three. 
and blue team is being routed in all lanes so far. Even though Lucian is right now fully back in the game. Leona is such a brutal counterpick into the Senna and uh, you've just seen why in very clear display. Just completely dismantling the Gen Senna lane here. And once again, blue team find themselves on the back foot and the stem who are now reeling to make an answer happen. Zack is waiting in the top lane brush. If they pull off this gank with the charge, it will be the Herald, but the teleport is coming in to respawn. Can the Fiddle survive that long? There's grievous wounds on him. He's trying to drain it out. The CC is there. He can't apply anything. The Vlad has to run away with the Hemo Plague proc doing no damage, finding no counter kill. Both mid laners commit their teleport, but Malzahar didn't really need his. And there's the Herald start. Can they contest this? The jungler is still boss side. Blue team cannot stop this. It's just the Vladimir. He has to try to run away. Malzahar does not have Malefic Grasp, but they need to still keep trying. Oh, wait, it's not called Malefic Grasp. It's called Nether Grasp. Malefic Vision, Nether Grasp. There we go. Malefic Grasp. At least I didn't call it Bane's Ultimate. <laughs> Leona is gonna get chain CC a little bit, but she's so tanky with the Eclipse, she'll just walk away. But there is also the Volibear Bear Flash! Bear Paul gets her stunned, and the Jin takes away his fourth kill here. The Effigy will spot out the Zac. The Zac has essentially been jungling on three quarters of the map, as the Volibear Bear hasn't really been to his top side at all. It's just the Vol it's just the Zac running cleanup duty up there for the camps. And as a result, he's got so much more income, over 40 CS ahead of his enemy jungler. There is such, such a huge jungle gap in this game. And the Volibear repeatedly trying to smash his face into bot lane with varying degrees of success. He finally does force a gank through and there it is, the chain CC once again coming down. The Malzahar setup is just so good for the Zac and insult to injury, the execution going out to the Malzahar, nothing goes over to the Vladimir's pocket and nothing is going the way of blue team in game one. The drain is still coming out onto the fiddle, he's just going to just casually walk away. No F's given and there's the Senna being CC down, yet again she has a flash over but the Ignite is taking the calling bullets. Lucian puts down his own wife. Oh no, what a graphic display. There it is, Lucian finds his third kill. He's catching up to the gen in terms of kills, and he's easily more fed than her at this moment in time. So right now, blue team, I can probably safely say has now three losing lanes. Bot lane here for blue team is not looking good. They might still be holding on to a momentary lead thus far. Let's check. Nope, just kidding. A very, very tiny bit behind. But the situation is very quickly turning against them as well. The Senna's just cannot survive against the Leona. This is not the this is not the way to pick a Senna in. You pick the Senna into a, or at least you gout counter picked in the worst way imaginable. And this is the result. The Leona Lucian finds such a free lane here. The Zac looking to start a Drake. But is this even feasible? He's three levels above the Volo Bear. He is in a 1v4. He needs to try to get out, but the last bounce, he does finish off. He gets rooted up. The rest of the damage is turning. They can't finish the Zack. He's been blobbed up. There's no damage left. The rest of the red team collapses like a wave smashing down on blue team. Every single member has just died. The charge giving the movement speed a long range center spade. Hooks up to the gen. 4 for 0. And the rest of red team, no casualties taken. They're going to go ahead and start this Drake. They picked a fight they cannot possibly win. They must know that if the Zac is three levels above your own jungler, you're not killing him. Especially because no nobody has threatened him. You know he has blobs. You know that this fight will take a very long time and red team will be collapsing and you just cannot finish that fight. You have no damage to kill anybody and the fiddlesticks, he's next on the chopping block. The red team army is here. The crowstorm drain gets instantly cancelled. He needs to try to survive the dawning shadow shields him, albeit only by a little bit. He does die, but not before taking down Kled with him. It is 5 to 16. Red team has over three times the number of kills. This is obscene. The rest of them will make a hasty retreat. The Volibear, he's gonna run past the Malzahar. The Malzahar does not have Nether Grasp, 
but he does have enough damage to beat the crap out of the bear, so the Volibear Bear just has to go on the retreat for now. Vladimir Med, he finally hits level 10, but it's been such a tumultuous road for him. Malzahar is a level on top of him so far, everybody on red team, well almost everybody is holding a bounty, but everybody is stronger than their player counterparts. The Zack has a 1000 gold bounty that a blue team just can't claim. There's no way they can kill this guy. Especially because your uh, AD, core, AD core is Jin and Senna. Two AD carries that are notoriously awful at tank busting. Quite possibly two of the worst in the game. And as the Zack gets stronger and stronger, he just has less and less reason to care about blue team's backline. And there it is. He's just tossing the Vladimir around and the flash nether grass comes in, killing off the bear yet again. That's going to be the third time the bear has died. Very, very quickly being put down. Now the players are trying to work and the Leona feeling so bold that they're tower diving. The CC lock is there. The Jin can't do anything under the protection of his own home. And the dig, the dive is still continuing. His tank is there. The double kill. The Lucian gets it. And the Zack coming up top forcing the Fiddlesticks flash. Every play is working. Everything's coming up Millhouse. This is the smoothest game Red Team could possibly play. What an incredible series of events here. And finally, 16 minutes in, they are gonna go for this Herald. This is still the first Herald of the game. They haven't had a reason to take it. But now with this, with blue team floundering in the wind, they can just drop the Herald and crush a turret and break the game wide open here. The Volar Bear gets caught out in his own jungle. There's nowhere to run. He tries to dunk onto the Lucian. And now the, he has nothing left. He needs to try to get out the Leona's being rooted in place. She will be the martyr. The Vladimir is still here chasing after him. Jakey is Canadian. Has left the game. He's gone back to Canada where I live. And the Malzahar pushing up mid lane. The Kled will have to try to reconnect soon. But even if he doesn't. I mean even if the Kled just leaves the game forever. Red Team still has like a good 20 minutes of buffer time before they can seriously fall behind. Just thanks to this Zack, he's so strong, he's coming in. The CC is landing yet again, the silence goes out onto the Vladimir. He has nowhere to go, he can't get the transfuse off. He gets killed off, he's gone legendary. This Zack cannot be stopped. Nether Grass goes out onto the Volibear, but the Dawning Shadow Shield tries to reverse the situation. The Senna finally gets on the board, killing off the Malzahar. This is gonna be 1, 6, and 3, and finally, Blue Team, they found a positive play, they found two kills. But Jakey is Canadian, has come back from customs, and he is back to play the game. The game goes back to a 5v5 situation. Blue team caught the tiniest of breaks, but it is a far cry from being what they needed. Zach trying to leash two camps at once, not how that works. He did it for extra damage on red, I'm aware of that. It just looked very comical. I thought I should clarify, just in case people start yelling at me. Red buff is gonna get taken away here by the gym, but he's doing this on top of a ward. Red team has a deep ward here, they do spot out two members of blue team. It's not even 20 minutes, Baron hasn't even spawned yet, but Red Team, they have such a monumental lead. It just seems like they can kill Baron from spawn, and the Kled, he just does not give a crap. He's going after the tower, and he does get it, and now it's just the Fiddle being left alone, and there's the Senna. The Root is there. The Kled, he needs to try to walk away, but the Crow Storm is burning. The Skarl is leaving, and he has nothing left. Jakey is Canadian, has been put down. He is the second player to die on their team. It's actually a pretty well distributed death score. The only other person they have to kill is this Zack. Now keep in mind, one of Malzahar's death was an execute. So technically he's 3 and 1. And this is gonna be the third Drake. Harold has been summoned for a distraction. Red team wants this, they're just coming in to secure this. The word has been cleared out, there's no vision. Blue team should know better than to contest this. Contesting failed Drakes have been their downfall time and time again. There's still a sneaky pink ward in the back of the pit. They do see this in broad daylight, but it's not like they can do anything about it. They need to try to counter push mid. They need to try to find some advantages. Can they make anything happen to Solar Flare? It will clip the Senna, slowing her down, blowing her flash, and there's a charge coming from the Kled. He needs. 
to get here way faster, but he's a little bit slow on the draw. Blue team will retreat. They land about half of that turret's damage. But the turret count still 4 to nothing. There is such a long and difficult road here for blue team to try to claw back into this game. It doesn't seem like they could get this. It takes so long and they don't have the right team to bust this. And there it is, the Volibear getting shredded like hell butter. And the rest of the team might just breaking out. The Mazar has been controlled in the back. Needs to try to pull. He does get the pull off in the nick of time. The Hemo Plague, where is it? He's already dropped it. And there's no damage left. Now he needs to try to get away. The Fiddlesticks is the next to go. The channeling from the Zac. He's going after the Jin. The Jin will flash away. He will be perfectly fine. But the rest of his team can't say the same for them. And red team, they know what to do. There's no more Crowstorm. There's no more Jungler. There's no more Hemo Plague. So the call is Baron Nasher. The only ultimate offer blue team here is going to be the Curtain Call. Blue team knows that they should try to at least contest this. But what do they have? They have nothing to fight this with. They need to just sit this one out and figure out a way to pull off a defense against Baron. They're not going to make it here in time. Too much pressure, too much damage. Red team just has too many things going in their favor. They get the Baron, they reset. The root onto the Malzahar. It is insane how every lane here for blue team just isn't having the their best matchups ever. This is such a disastrous pick and ban. Malzahar doesn't mind the Vladimir mashup at all. He's got two different ways they can chain down a Vladimir and prevent him from doing his thing. And Malzahar, thanks to the shield, is naturally tanky, so it's hard for a Vlad to all in him or pressure him in lane because the Malzahar all shoves. Malefic Vision stays in the pool. It's a very good mashup into the Vlad. It's one of the better mashups you can pick into a Vladimir at mid lane. And top lane. Kled going up against the tank Philo is actually a dream scenario for the Kled. He has natural Grievous Wounds as his kit. He can stop the drain. And because Philo's going tank, he doesn't do enough damage to Kled before he can get a remount. So it's actually a very smooth ride for Kled up top. And bot lane, need I say more about the Jin Senna matchup? Jin Senna going up against, well, first of all, Hyper Tanky Zack Jungle is already disastrous enough. But on top of that, the Sana has the unenviable job of laning against the Leona, one of her all-time greatest counters. We just have three lanes that have been drafted so that it's difficult for blue team to beat them. These are the counter picks that blue teams dread, and for some reason they've encountered each and every single one of them. And now with Baron pressures coming in from all sides, blue team have been posed in. A flash comes out from somewhere. Who flashed? Oh, the effigy. The effigy flashed. <laughs> I was looking over at the summoner spells. Zack is just so insanely tanky. He doesn't even have armor items. He doesn't need it. The blue team's tanks, well, blue team's tank busters just don't exist. They can't do any meaningful amount of damage to the Zack for him to be scared. He hasn't even been blobbed in recent memory. He's just been so untouched. And there it is once again. They want to make a pick happen onto the Kled, and it is there. The Bountiful Harvest does harvest his soul away, but here comes the Zack. He doesn't care. Instant burst onto the center. Oh my god, he just sits on her. A godlike Zack. The Blob is coming in. He's going to go legendary off this. And the Fiddle seems like he has nowhere to run. The rest of the cavalry is here. A legendary Zack. He's arrived. He's huge. He's unkillable. And blue team has no answer. It's 24 kills to 10. It's going to be a 12,000 gold lead. I had to double check because I wanted to make sure I didn't misspeak. It seems so monumental. It's just 24 minutes in. They have a 500 lead per minute of the game. That is just crazy. The Vladimir being chained down in the pool. The CC still lingering. The puke coming up against the Volibear. The Volibear needs to make a kill happen, but the Mal Malzahar expertly flashed away. He needs a last bit of damage, but he cannot connect. I hate mushrooms has been killed off by the Space A's and the rest of the push is still coming. Blue team is just bleeding members left and right. They cannot hold the defense together. They cannot protect their own base. Dragon is spawning. This is the soul. But red team, they might not even want this. They can just continue the push. They can continue the siege. Blue team, they're still undermanned in their own base. They are going to call the retreat. The Kled does get rooted up. 
He's been the martyr all this time, and he might be the martyr yet again. He will break onto the back. The Lucian is in trouble. The Ignite goes out onto the Vladimir. The day is the kill. The shutdown goes on to the AD carry, but the Zack is the big problem. They still can't hold him down. The root, the CC chain, everything's there. He's been silenced up. He needs to try to get a slingshot out. He's gonna get it out, but he gets blocked at the last moment. The Mazar has nowhere to go. He has to be chained down here. The pool, the damage, but the melee vision that kills off the Vlad in his own pool. Curtain call comes up, trying to sing a requiem for the Alzahar, but the Soul of Flirt cancels it out immediately. The rest of the damage is still coming in, but not before the Malzahar takes some victims away with him. The rest of the damage is still there. Triple kill for the Malzahar, and now Blue Team, they just lost Drake. They can't kill it anymore. The Malzahar somehow kills off three with his dying breath, and now it's a 1v1 matchup. The Senna guns her down. It's an unofficial ace here for Blue Team, but it's such an expensive defense, and worst of all, they lost their one chance to take away the Drake. They're doing this on top of a ward. But they're going up against the charge, they're going up against the Lucian. Calvary is coming. If they want to secure this Drake, they may have to do it with their bodies. There it is, blue team secures the Drake. The Senna doesn't have time to pick up the soul. The Lucian has arrived. The Senna just needs to give up her life to ensure her jungler gets out. And that is going to be the plan. She yoinks the souls away before her death as well. They pulled off the miraculous ace. But that is just not enough. It's too little, too late. They stave off the soul, but they can't stave off everything else. Baron's in one minute. And red team, they're still up, they're still fine. And there's still members of blue teams on the respawn bench. It seems like there has never been a moment in this game where blue team had all five players on the field at the same time. It is just so lopsided. These team fights are just not going their way. And red team, everything they do, it is working. The Zack did finally die, but he just worsens the problems of himself being unkillable. He's picked up that man's plate. The whole thing. There it is. He's winding up. He's going for it. The Vladimir, he needs to try to get away, but the pool cannot possibly stop the bear trap. Skarl does finally run for the hills and Kled gets dismounted. Mini Clan needs to find some courage to get his partner back. And they might just find the courage against the big purple worm in the river. They are turning for Baron number 2. And this time, Blue Team does have every living member. Can they contest this? The answer is likely still no. They might just give this up again and try to defend their base using what little they have. The red team once again takes away a completely uncontested Baron Nasher. All five members reset, regroup, buy their stuff, and now this is gonna be a final push here, and there it is, the charge! Screw what I said about the reset, they're just, they just found a window, they bust through the door, and coming right in, the jungler is dead, the support is dead, the AD carry is dead, there's no reset, everything's a debate, the rest of the uh, kills are piling up, the Fiddlesticks is tanky, but he's not tanky enough, he's gonna be put down as well, and it does seem like Team EZW, Keeps up their 0% win rate with Tom Fiddle in Clash. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just seemed funny to me. And there it is, a perfect ace. Red team pulls the trigger. They don't need the reset. They're just gonna end the game. 28 and a half minutes in. GG is called. Game 1 goes over to red team. That was a dominating performance. Uh, just, just a... It was the all, all things considered, they got demolished. And now the players are scouting for their next match. They've been dropped into the lower bracket, and now they play for at most a fifth place finish here. Scouting for Clash, they are. So un unlike yesterday, I'm hoping that Clash doesn't just blow up again, and I don't have to sit here and pad time for a solid hour. So. Instead, I was I have two ways of going about this break. I can either talk about random stuff, or I can just go play a game, <laughs> like play a different game, and wait. You know, what do I do in the meantime? Scouting for Clash, Scouting for Clash, Scouting for Clash. So that game did end rather quickly. So I'm not sure if... I'm not sure how long we have to wait, because I'm assuming Clash is working, right? So if, if Clash is working, then... 
they won't have to wait that long. Yesterday, when Clash was not working and everything was blowing up, I tried to pad for time as much as I can before it was just straight up announced, Oh, by the way, Clash doesn't work. Do literally anything else. And I just said, okay. And I stopped the recording. But today, if the next match is just going to begin normally, I'm assuming the other team is going to take slightly longer than 28 minutes. But if that's the case, then we'll just have to sit here and wait for about 10-20 minutes uh, in the interim downtime. That's roughly how long... Uh, we're expecting this to take. And today it's actually just me. I don't have a co-caster. I, I didn't ask for one. And I'm also not streaming this on Discord today. Maybe I should actually. Yeah, let me just turn on my Discord stream. There we go. But I'm not sure uh, what I can do in the meantime. Because I, I had two different ways of going about this. I could just like play another game in the interim. And just... Have some gameplay going, not League, but like some other game. Or I could just try to generate random discussion and just talk about random stuff. But honestly, when it's just myself, it's really hard to find random stuff to talk about. So I'm actually super tempted to just like boot up another game and play that one. I, I only have to make a last for about 10 to 20 minutes anyway. I don't know. I really wish there were... This is one of the few times where I wish there was interactivity in the cast. So we'll just have to see where this goes. It does seem like they're still scouting for Clash. So it's not in Champ Select. And unfortunately, it doesn't really tell us uh, what scouting for Clash means. It could be waiting for your opponents to finish a game. Or it could just be... Uh, the five minute waiting period before you get into champ select. But in any case, we can assume that champ select takes around five minutes as well. So we can assume there's going to be still a decent long time before we can get into the next game. So tell you what, tell you what's on the docket. Let's just play something else. Yeah, alright, let, let's just go play something else. It's gonna be some chill gameplay. How about that? There's a woman here with a suitcase. I know. I'm actually, uh, wait, hold on. Before I go any further, I'm going to keep the leak screen on the other monitor. So if they do get in game, I can just very quickly hop back in. But this game is uh, Trails in the Sky the Third. It is currently the other ongoing series I have on the channel. That and just doing random league commentary, I'm doing the series where I fight every boss in this game. I go in blind and then I stop when I beat it. And I'm playing this game on the hardest difficulty, which... I mean, normally that doesn't sound like much, but in this game it actually means quite a lot. This game on the hardest difficulty is not a joke. The game was actually not balanced around this difficulty at all. So you actually just straight up die. Like you die in the tutorial fight because all the enemies kill you in one round. That's how ridiculous some of these fights can get on that on the hardest difficulty. It's not necess it's not necessarily recommended for you to start the game on new game. Uh, new game plus might be more suited for the hardest difficulty. But because I'm a total sa I'm a total masochist, I'm like, I don't care about my well-being and sanity. I decided to play the hardest difficulty on new game. Unfortunately, I am here to reap the consequences of my avarice, and here I am in the sewers grinding for levels. This is a side event, it's not a part of the main story. But that being said, there is a fight at the end of this that on Nightmare is actually really hard, to the point where you can actually softlock. Because you just get beat over and over again and you're far too weak to do anything about it. So I'm sitting in the sewers, trying to train up a little bit. My goal here is to get to level 13 would be good. The ideal goal is 14. I'm not sure how much patience I have just sitting in the sewers waiting for level 14 to hit. In fact, actually, wait, let me go here. 
I know there's a pretty big pack I can fight over here. This, that fish thing. I should save doing this. There it is. Nice. That's satisfying. Killing off everything. One hit. Killing off everything. So I don't do that much damage to the sheep. But if everything goes well, I should actually just... I do need to hit us three times to kill it, and he can kill me in way less hits than that. Ooh, Aina's suitcase missed. Black fist of the monkey, she out. Hmm, that's very bad. That's not ideal. That's very not ideal. 91. Please miss or something? Word. Aww. I'm dead. Yeah, the big packs are harder. <gasps> no! Wait! Proxy Puppet! Ooh. I equipped a Proxy Puppet and forgot about it. Let's not do that. Actually, hold on. There's a genuine chance I die in this fight, so in that case, I don't want the Proxy Puppet to be equipped. The Proxy Puppet protects you from one death and then breaks. But in that case, like I don't want it in before the final boss. I want to equip that for the boss fight if I can at all help it. This is just not the right fight. Oh. Whatever. Free EXP is free EXP. Okay, I'm going to reset this fight by leaving the area and coming back. Beat up this guy. I'm actually really close to leveling up now. Where's the where's the monster? Wait, what? Oh right, I need to actually switch zones because this doesn't count as a zone. This counts as a zone. That should respawn the pack. I don't want to fight this egger. This egger self destructs when it dies. And I'm no good way of- oh, shoot. Shouldn't have done that. Actually, they don't do that much damage. They've actually clumped all off for one AoE too. All part of the plan, boys. Look at that cleanup. Oh, not the level up, but I can kill this thing and level up. Whoops. Alright, that's not how you level up. Okay, no residual effects, that's good. I don't care if I take damage here, I can level up and get a free heal. A f free heal. That's actually a pretty easy kill, huh? Um, wait, how much do I have to go for the next level? 1960 EXP. So I think if I just beat up the black sheep, I can get it. Whoops. I need to switch zones to respawn. I'm gonna wait for the egger to walk past. And let's make another save here. Save off. Damn, this is not a sheep. I would like to spawn a sheep again and kill it for EXP. Oh, hello. Are you my co-caster? Uh, I will not be here the entire time. Oh. That's okay. Unfortunately for, uh, for Intergame Entertainment, I am recording myself playing another game. Oh, Logan, plugging his stream. I'm not streaming. Uh, I, I am no longer an active Twitch streamer, if that's a better way of phrasing it. Wait, but I don't see you playing, I just see the... Yeah, because I'm not streaming that, I'm only streaming League on Discord. Oh, did they already win the... 
Or did they already play the first game? Yep, their first game is over. They did lose it. In oh, uh, extremely convincing fashion. They got stomped very hard. Interesting, interesting. Show me the show me the stats low. Oh wait no, I see them right there. Oh I can show you the uh There, I showed you the score lines. Ah, oh, I see I hate mushrooms. And then Wait, Andy was support center, support gym. Oh, I, I, I'm surprised. I thought it, I, I actually initially thought it was Lucian Leona with Andy and Raymond. Uh, and they had the Zach, but no. Oh, and once actually, again, Tank, Tank Fiddle. They had, they had Vlad. Who's Honey Dude? Uh, I don't actually know his name. Whoops. Walked into this fight. I don't want to fight this one at all. Let's just retreat. Actually not getting any EXP off the fish. So I need to fight the sheep. Oh no. So just an update, they are currently in champ select for game 2, so the game will be beginning. Uh, decently soon. Oh, I don't like that outcome, actually. I don't want to take damage. Taking damage there is kind of bad. Where's my auto save? Actually, I can just spam retreat and- Oh, wait, hold that thought! We'll play this game later. Because right now, duty calls. We are going to get back into the cast for game two. So, game two will be starting now. Let's hit this button. Come here and spec to the game. So here is our matchups for game two. We're going to have a rumble mid. We're going to have a- Wait. Rumble top, that's Rumble top. It's Rumble top, Lucian mid, Hecarim jungle. They're mixing up the roles of this game, seems like. The bot lane is gonna be Ezra Leona, and their match is gonna be against a Yasuo, Azir, Cannon, Graves, and Soraka. So that's likely gonna be a Graves jungle. It's a Cannon bottom lane, seems like. And the solo lane, no, wait, that doesn't make sense. It's Cannon top, and this bot lane, Yasuo, Soraka. That seems like yeah, how. Red team is playing it. Is that mid lane Lucian? It is. It does seem like it is mid lane Lucian. That is their mid laner, so I'm gonna assume that's. I don't think that's, it's. Uh, I don't think it's bot lane Azir. Are it, you sure about that? Might be. I think it's bot lane Yas. I think it's Yasuo. I think it's Yasuo. I can't see bot lane Azir here. I don't know. I don't see it. It's oh, it's not impossible, but I don't think that's what they're going for. It seems a little bit suboptimal compared to running Yasuo bot. We're gonna be 40 seconds out for game two. Just a reminder, EZW did in fact lose game one. So now they are in the second round of the lower brackets. Their placement can no longer be higher than fifth. I forgot the price distribution for Conqueror Clash, but I do think you have to be top four for a premium pass to pay off with the scan. So unfortunately losing that first game may have disqualified them. From getting it. I am I could be completely wrong with this.
I'm just a spectator to clash. I am not a player. There it is. Let's get into game two. So it does seem like it's a top lane cannon here. With phase rush. That is actually a very fast loading screen as well. So let's just set everything up for the spectator view. Oh, turn off time controls. And if everybody comes in, we are going to... Oh, is that Rumble Jungle? Oh, is it? Oh, it is Rumble yeah. Jungle. Wow. Rumble Jungle top lane is uh, Hecarim. Okay, that's actually what I assumed, but I didn't think they actually do it. Mid lane. I thought they, I thought they roll swap before they would attempt something like that, but... They are actually going for the Rumble Jungle. Alright, what is the matchups looking like here? It's gonna be the Cannon Top. It's gonna be the Graves Jungle. What What else? Uh, Yasuo's... No, he's got the skin too. Sorry. Is there... I bet. No way. No oh, way. Oh, he's heading down mid. Okay. He's heading down mid. Rumble's got the Jungle skin too. No, he, he's the Rumble in the Jungle. He's just... In the Jungle. He's just doing his skin cosplay. The Rombo in the jungle. Hmm. Grave starting topside. So unlike game one, there's not going to be any level one shenanigans. There's no deep invade. There's no early ward. Soraka is solo guarding the pixel brush. We're just going to have to see the movements of everybody. Never before seen Rumble Jungle. Here we go. Here we go. Mid Lucian. What minute thirty in? Oh, oh, some. Have some very team. early action here. No, I, I'm actually. This is actually a pretty peculiar matchup for me to commentate. I genuinely ah. don't know who wins this lane. I don't play either of these two champions well enough to predict this matchup. Lucian wins. Lucian has a very strong level too. Lucian wins straight up, I Does think. <laughs> yes. I, I actually don't know this matchup at all, so I'm not at liberty okay. to talk about it. I mean, well, Azir needs three, like at least three items to be relevant. <laughs> all right. So according to our analyst here that I hired off the streets. Yeah. Uh, Lucian wins this matchup straight up. Straight up. Unless he, like, actually, like, screws up everything. <laughs> I don't really see it as you're winning we this. You see a very early zone being established here by Blue Team's bot lane. Oh, Zero <laughs> taking a lot of pain very early on. Yasuo's yeah. still level 1. He can't really guess some CS. I got cayenne pepper in my eye. Oh, God, it burns. Oh, no. Wash it off. Oh, I did. All right. All right. I'm back. Okay. Unfortunately, right. after getting pepper in your eyes, you get to see something else that will make you cry this game. Oh, oh, what is- wait, 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 what's going oh, on? That's a Yasuo. In that, the bottom that lane. Is Yasuo. That is a Yasuo. Oh, the that's Yasuo, he gets rude by the Equinox. But why is- why is, uh, why is Rumble jungling? Well, because-, because Rumble why, why not? <laughs> yeah. Good question. Why does Hecarim have TP Ignite? Because he's top lane. TP Ignite is actually, uh, I know this player prefers the TP Ignite setup because it allows him to be very aggressive while playing the horse as well. He actually wins a lot of matchups with that setup. Uh, interesting, running, interesting. Being ghost and flashless, you can actually just Andy, press... Andy, please auto, Andy, please auto the Yasuo to get rid of the shield. Please. He did. You see he auto him uh, you while training. Oh, I'm, maybe I... No, I'm watching your stream. I'm watching oh, your you're stream. watching my stream, okay. In the bottom lane. So far in the early game, it's a pretty even game, all things considered here. The Graves is slightly faster at farming than the Rumble, as to be expected. The Rumble actually already went back why once. Is, why does the Rumble also have a, Why does the Graves also have Ignite? Why does so many Ignite in this game? Come on, come on, 
That's there were three ignites just on blue side. The gank is All coming right. down though, Soraka. The silence is there is with there. the root and the wind wall. Oh, That's yeah. gonna stop the gank dead in his tracks. Nothing else is gonna happen. Oh, the Lucian, he's gonna get exhausted. Ooh, the damage is coming up, but the ignite. No, the Lucian, Ooh. the card is faster. First blood going over to the Lucian for a solo kill at the mid lane. That was pretty close. That was closer than it imagined. That was very close. Both laners expended their combat <laughs> summoners, <laughs> but as you, as we all know, as we all know, ignite beats exhaust. But Azir still has flash. Yep, Azir still has the flash. <laughs> The Graves, he was trying for a deep gank, but he can't get it off against a Hecarim. So he's just going to recall. He does steal away the Gromp. So he's about two camps ahead of the Rombo at the present moment. Ooh, that's a... I don't think that's the... <laughs> he did dash a little bit too far forward, but there is the star called the Soraka. It's the saving grace in this lane. It is the EMT, the ambulance. Uh, the Yasuo can make a lot of mistakes and just get patched right up. Uh, yeah, thanks to least. Soraka's newest feature introduced in the latest patches. If you heal someone while you hit a star call, your heal costs less health to cast. Uh, if it's rank 5, it straight up costs 0, so Soraka can just essentially infinitely sustain the Yasuo. She's hitting a few very easy star calls right now. Hmm. Still Russian against Soraka. Uh, against Soraka, more than ever, uh, dodging the star call is a top priority. Lucian ping the Azir flash, but. Yeah. Oh, but there is this. Ooh, oh, the Azir, he shuffled okay. in. That's gotta be a misclick. And then he oh. does have the defensively flash away, but it's not enough. Rombo catches him and wastes him with the flame sword for a second yeah. kill. Oh. Could have been a kill there. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Oh, the star call is still sustained the Soraka. But now the problem for the Soraka is her mana reserves is running on low. Now she needs to be a little bit economical about what spell she's gonna sling out. Star call is cheap enough to be spammed, but the heal definitely does add up in time. And Equinox ex is uh, especially expensive to just spam willy nilly. So she does have to watch her mana bar. Oof. Uh, this Lucian is just dominating this layer. Oh yeah, it's certainly he's destroying this lane. This is yeah. such a good matchup for him now. He's as expected. As expected. He, and here's the thing, Azir, he's been forced on the defensive. He actually picked up a Dark Seal to prolong the corrupting pot. But no. he's also so far away from even last chapter. Yeah. Because Azir in lane does buy last chapter to help with his mana problems. He doesn't actually finish the Ludens because Ludens is very Ooh, inefficient. Big chunk. But what he just does do is hold on to last chapter and sell it back later. Last chapter has a crazy high resale value. It is like 1300 to buy and 910 to sell. So it's a super good item. Like Dark Seal has less resale value than that. But the problem with buying a last chapter early is that you need to be able to afford it in the first place before you make that investment to help you lane. Because right now laning has definitely been his weakest suit so far. Fighting quite a few unfortunate deaths here. And the Lucian, Azir he's, laning is, uh, he's coasting honestly high. Very bad. <laughs> he's coasting high. He's got 50% more CS than this Azir. Well, yeah. Azir is really, is really weak later. <laughs> there it is, the Lucian. He's going again, but he's actually running out of mana. Just enough for the calling. He does get shuffled back. But it might not be enough. He is gonna opt to kill himself to the tower to deny the Graves the assist. It's gonna be a one for one exchange. The Zier does pick up the shutdown goal, it seems like. Two kills is enough for a shutdown, especially with the CS lead. But Nima bot lane, the 2v2, it results in the kill onto the Soraka as well Ooh. as the Yasuo, a two for nothing. Right now, blue team off to a flying start this game, holding on to a healthy 2.5k lead very early on in the game. Eight and a half minutes in. Ooh. And eight and a half minutes in, you know what else? Herald is on the table. Early Herald might be possible here with the Rumble in the top side. We'll see what the play is. Now if they do look to take an early Herald, they can use it to break open a solo lane. Right now a really good candidate would be to just get Herald and smash mid. And just destroy Azir's laning phase once and for all. Yeah. 
And that will open up the Lucian as well to exert a lot of pressure on the side lane. And it could drastically accelerate the game to a point where red team, they're just not ready right now to deal with it. Cannon is still level 8. He hasn't even ulted yet. Really, it's just been kind of a farm fest up there. And the bot lane is actually favoring blue team as well. So in this situation, the best way to break the game open when you have winning lanes like this is to further accelerate the game. So deny red team any and all chances to come back. And in the background, my co-caster co appears to be abusing his... His eye. <laughs> I don't think your Ooh. eye sounds like that when you smack it. Oh, I was going to say fine. kitchen counter. Oh, oh, there it is. The format coming up with the Soraka room. Equinox. Everything whiffs. That's actually, that's actually a very good guess. It was my kitchen counter. See, I, I called it. So the Lucian does get out of that gank. The Equinox will completely whiff. Red Team does secure the Skeleto, but they're not strong enough to pose for this Dragon right now. That's true. They have to just back off. Now 10 minutes into the game, it is 5 to 1. Blue Team are going to move in to start securing. They're going to look to take away the Drake. Oh, but the Lucian, he needs to be careful. There is the Calling, it's coming down again. Azir, he needs to try to shuffle him back again, but he's not going to do it. He's so low. One more Piercing Light will kill him, and there it is. Ooh. Snipe from long range. The Azir nice. lingers a little bit too long. He's yeah, actually abandoned. <laughs> he's actually abandoned Lost Chavry. He's gotten Seeker's Arm Guard oh, to survive. Oh, that Tower Dive. Yeah, but even that's not oh. enough, and there's a Tower Dive. The Soraka dies, and the Wind Wall is not enough to stop the Flamethrower. The Rumble kills off the Yasuo. And that is going to be a plate down at the bot as well. So blue team, they're picking up a lot of kills. But the problem is, can they break the game open with these kills? Can they siege towers? Can they get yes. global objectives here? They are <laughs> going to move towards the Drake. Yo, mid's down to one plate, bot's down to two. Yeah, we're three. I... Your mid lane has naturally won this game straight up. Which is amazing. Oh, the Onslaught oh, of Shadows is a oh. little bit too f short actually but it's not enough anyway the solo kill going over to the hecarim he doesn't even have a phase stun that was straight up base damage and the cannon not expecting it gets taken out no protobell complete means he can't get himself right. out of that situation the gold lead has now ballooned to 5000 wow. now typically it's like when it's like an 18 19 minute game and i see the gold lead at five or six thousand i think it's a pretty safe gg but when yeah. you get that kind of lead at 11 minutes in, that is another story entirely. This is such a one-sided performance here in Clash Game 2. Red Team does yeah. seem like they're lost, they don't know what to do. And this so many of their happens. plays are just being turned. <laughs> they can't even make plays, they're just cowering at the tower and still, even then, they're getting dove, they're getting killed. The Graves, he's posturing around top river. Is he gonna try to sneak a Herald? Nope, he's just trying to gank mid. That's a terrible idea at this moment in time. This Lucian is so strong, he doesn't even care about your rest smite. And the Graves wisens up, he does turn around to leave. Graves is level 9 though. He is level 9. <laughs> but still, the Azir is level 9. You don't want to be... You don't want to be out leveled by the enemy mid. That's a, that's a worrying outcome. Oh, that's here. Oh, he does have to be careful. There's oh, a shuffle coming back. The Lucian, he did draw aggro. He's been exhausted. He has nowhere to go. The shutdown, it goes over to the Azir. He finally finds it. He kills off the Lucian by shoving him into his own tower. Oh. The Graves is still in proximity. The Rumble has been blinded. He can't see. He doesn't know where he's going. Now he needs to try to retreat. The Equalizer gets dropped, but oh. it's not enough. The Graves has the shotgun damage, and suddenly they find a positive play. They turn something around. They get some That's money it. for themselves. Throw on throw. And there it is, the oh. Solar Flare. It will whiff the Graves and the Zenith Blade. Oh. Will not hit either. The Graves might just be able to walk away, but there is a Flash Shield of Daybreak. The Ezreal commits two shot. Onto the air, and there's a slicing maelstrom coming down as well. The Leona's getting locked up, but the Zenith is gonna try to take up every <laughs> every bit of damage. Double kill going to the Ezreal. The cannon cannot find the finishing blow. Eclipse tanks up everything. It is such a good ability for tanking these situations. They are gonna try to finish this tower. Can they get it? Oh, Hecarim! Oh, Hecarim! Oh, my god. He... He threw his life on the line to try to kill that tower, and by the skin of his teeth, they got it. It is now 11 to 3. 
Interesting. Blue team lost their 5k lead, it went down to 3k, and then they just reclaim it, and now it goes up bigger than it was before. Lucian has been sent down to contest the bottom lane. 1v2. This Interesting. This Yasuo is very weak. He hasn't power spiked yet. He needs either Ooh, two more items. <laughs> he needs either that's two awesome. complete I'm items for uh He needs two complete items for the 100 percent crit, or he needs eight more deaths to hit to hit the 0 and 10 power spike. Oh wow, big Eat gets <laughs> eated out of the game by the Lucian. 69. <laughs> Big Eat gets eated out. 0 3 and 0 for the Soraka. The bot lane here for Blue Team is a combined 0 and 5 and 0. They have done nothing this game except die. That wind wall very ineffective. The Leona is zoning off the ADC. That's just terrifying to watch. The onslaught, the shadows, the fears, the cannon sideways. The equalizer cuts out his escape. That's gonna force out his flash. And here's the graves. He's trying to Ooh. find something back. The flash is forced out of the wrong bow, and that might be enough movement speed to get both of them out of there. The graves cannot give chase. But meanwhile, the Ezreal he gets spotted out in the river. The herald has been enraged. It climbs into the wall, and there's the Azir. He needs to try to shuffle back the Ezreal. Nope, he doesn't Ooh. get it. The wall is a little bit too far, but the soldiers are stabbing forward. The Ezreal blinks over the wall. He's safe and sound. There's no kill going out onto him. The Leona and the Lucian, they're coming in. They have a backup ADC. He's angry. He wants some blood. The, Lu the Graves gets out of the brush. They're going for a 1v1. The Slicing Maelstrom onto just a Hecarim, but he's taking no damage. The cannon is stuck in the pit. He's going to be taken out. And now the Herald is next on the chopping block. But here's the Leona on the outskirts of the wall. Shield of Daybreak lands on the Graves. The CC chain is there. It's perfect. And now the Azir, he He's left alone in the pit, he can't do anything. The Graves, wait, the, now the Graves of Lucian, he's flashing in, he's dashing over, he's got two guns, he wants to kill him off, he does get a killing spree. Over to the Lucian, 6 2 and 2. Pinkwork has cleared out, and now every member of Blue Team, they take a winning fight outside of the Herald pit, so they will help themselves to the Herald as well. They will surrender a turret in the bot lane, it seems like this mini wave is enough for that tower to die. But the uh, the Yasuo has to call off his push from here. He can't keep going, which means they also Dragon surrender up. position on the Inferno Drake. <laughs> Blue team is poised to take it right now. They do reset for it. Leona is going to clear out the pit. She doesn't have a pink on herself, nor does she have sweepers. So she cannot secure vision. She is going to recall. But by recalling, it means that blue team is no longer going to put Dragon up as an option. The junglers are going back, top lane is going bot, the Ezreal is farming a camp. Passively getting some income here. Oh, Ezreal is just going to solo Dragon? Oh no. Seems like he will solo Dragon. Oh, well, Rumble here will help, but seems like they will just start the Dragon now. It is a completely Cannon. uncontested Drake, the Ocean Rift does set in. 17 minutes in, it is 15 to 3, the gold lead is 7,000. Oh, Rumble looking for something? Down bot, maybe? There's a lot of blue team members bottom lane. I wonder what they're planning down here. And there's the calling onto the cannon. He has nowhere to run. Oh. The Lucian oh. goes on a killing spree. <laughs> Rampage. Oh. And there's the gang. Also, the shadows over the wall. Big Eek gets eaten out for a fourth time this game. Maybe his name is an omen. Maybe he needs to die 69 times this game. You're right. 69, 69. And there's oh, the Graves. He's going for the 1v1. Oh, the 1v1 is happening. The collateral damage. Oh. It flies wide. One more shot will do it. No, the minions oh. finish the job. It's a 1 for 1. But the Graves walks away with the shutdown here. Oh, that's that, was a, that was actually That was a good really dodge. Close. <laughs> a good dodge on the collateral damage. But still, it is... He started that fight too low and Rest Smite is too good. But regardless, blue team takes their bounty, they get the inhibitor at 18 minutes into the game. The gold lead balloons up to 7.5 thousand. Azir is just not having a nice game. He certainly is those, not. He finished components. last chapter. <laughs> he finally finished last chapter, so now his laning will be easier, am I right? Yeah. Well, look, yeah. At that, look at that blue build Azir. Blue build is here. <laughs> Classic move. I mean, this is what you're supposed to go more or less, but not in this order and not this late. Yeah. I I think like he could have abandoned the last chapter route seven minutes ago. Yeah. But he still finished it and now he's working on Nashers, which is gonna be his first real completed item. He doesn't even have shoes I yet. I don't think he could've he should have skipped the seekers. 
No, the Seekers is mandatory. But if he built the Seekers, he should have given up on last chapter. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't I don't fought the Seekers, but I fought last chapter so late. The, the reason you got last chapter at all is to help you with laning. But well, your, if you your lane it, was over before you even started, so... If you build it first... If you build the Seekers... I, I mean, think he would have died yeah. harder if he didn't have Seekers early on. The Soraka... No, if you built the last chapter... Soraka gets out of the game. The Graves gets taken out as well. And the Shuffle, it is not enough. And suddenly, across the map, three bodies on the ground here for a red team. Without much of a team fight, really. They don't really need to fight, they're just losing in these individual fights. And the Yasuo, Ooh. he's being pounded by two supers, and it's doing so much more damage to him than he's bargaining for. The Hecarims are charging forward, forgetting about everything else. The cannon can't hurt him, the Yasuo can't hurt him. And that's all red team has left, really. The rest of blue team is pushing mid, and there's just nobody to stop them. All they have are minions. These minions are not doing a lot at this present moment. 9,000 gold ahead. 20 minutes in. They can surrender now. They could. I mean, I but would. They, uh, they're holding on hope. There is no hope. Their mental, great. their mental is too good. Their mental yeah, is too strong. They have strong mental fortitude. They're strong Zier's mental, and there's obviously finished his Nashers. Okay. 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 Yeah. Nashers is done, but he still doesn't have shoes. Yeah, you do need the shoes. <laughs> That's a little. Uh, you kind of need shoes to play this game. <laughs> it's like a. It's like McDonald's. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Oh, ooh. Oh, that was there's a long Zenith blade. Yep, that is very long. That's Soraka. <laughs> Dead for the sixth time this game. <laughs> Combined 0 8 0 in the bottom. Wait. <laughs> the cannon is 0 4 0. It looks like really Graves and Azir are the only ones who at least played this game. Really, have they played this game? This Azir has been bullied since minute <laughs> one. This, this is not okay. This is cyberbullying. And in fact, three members on blue team completely deathless because they just don't get hurt. They just don't take losing fights anymore. But uh, they can go I up against overwhelming the odds. <laughs> I think that's the Azir's fault. <laughs> now, what is their salvation if there is any to be found? Uh, the late game. There is no late game. Late game. You're Azir going up against these guys. Late game, no chance. Late game, Azir and Yasuo can actually kill them <laughs> so here's the problem with late game azir ignoring the fact that he's so behind azir is yeah. a champion that in the late game you do do a lot of damage but you also need a lot of time to set up and you don't have that time to set up the azir is just gonna die again the emperor's device shoves back the horse but he's just taking turrets like it's going out of fashion he doesn't care tens three and two this lucian first to uh, go into the double digit kill range 41.9k against 31.7. The gold lead has gone to 10,000. A five digit gold lead. Yeah. I mean, Baron is up, red. but they're not even interested. They're going for the looking drink. Red team. They can just, just uh, siege. There's no stopping yeah. them. Yeah. Look at a red team, it just looks like a solo queue draft. This is a very <laughs> weird draft. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, like, I mean, you're right. This is a very weird draft, and it's also a team with almost no visible win condition. It's very strange. This is a team with no win condition. There's no cohesion in their team composition, and yeah, to make things worse, they all got stomped in lane. All of them. The only thing I can justify is maybe the cannon was stall enough time with the maelstrom for the Azir to set up. But you shouldn't be setting up during a cannon maelstrom. <laughs> you should already be de dealing damage. And there's well, a Baron. Then. It's melting like butter. This is the reverse of game one. In game one, Team EZW is basically red team right now. Except they're actually... They actually held on for a little bit. They actually yeah. at least won a fight or two. But red team, yeah. they're winning nothing. This was the exact same situation blue team found themselves in last game. Where they had three losing lanes. Everything was awful. They lost their base. But even in that situation, they managed to beat back one Baron. Uh, but it does yeah. seem like <laughs> this one Baron is all they need to close the game. Red team uh, is just is. having a picnic. I I don't know what they're doing here. They're farming fantasy points, though. Then. Yeah. They're, they're having a picnic outside their own base. Well, they can't really push out because no. the threat of death is really <laughs> literally at death. Right there. <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to be in the game, you might as well just get out of the game entirely and surrender. And there's the calling coming in. The Soraka's on a shred of light pops the barrier. A little bit too late. 
the true shot will not find her. But there it is, the wall, Ooh. the shuffle, it's coming in, but he shuffles into his death, the slicing millstrom goes in the back, but he doesn't even finish it, collateral damage, it does kill off the Leona, and here's a teleporting horsey, the Soraka gets feared into her own inhibitor, and that's four bodies you know. on the ground very fast, the fifth <laughs> adds it to the pile, a perfect ace, almost perfect. Credit, credit where credit is due, that was a, that was a pretty good engage. That was pretty good engage. <laughs> Just yeah. Too bad he engaged straight into death. Yeah, if only he were stronger. <laughs> if only they weren't. 15k <laughs> and uh, blue team well. farming fantasy points going for the inhib instead of the nexus <laughs> what the hell <laughs> this is very pm oh they're farming Sorry. for structures destroyed milestones what the heck yeah <laughs> they all got a structured destroyed milestone on their eternals just padding Ooh. stats 25 minutes in red team taps out as if they were in the game to begin with and EZW moves on to the lower bracket grand finals, playing for fifth six. I think I understand. It's because they are in the lower bracket. Actually, <laughs> why are they in an ARAM game? I'm assuming the next team surrendered. <laughs> I'm gonna right? assume the next team surrendered and they just got eighth. They got eighth? <laughs> No, sorry, fifth. I I'm fifth, assuming yeah. that's why. Like, their the final team surrender, so they finished fifth. But we, we gotta cast three games, so let's cast this ARAM. No way. <laughs> <laughs> We're casting this ARAM, it's happening. That's, uh, wow. I think I understand now. It's because it's in the lower bracket, nobody cares. <laughs> Yo, Eddie said no clue. Are you guys playing? What do you mean we're what? playing? Aren't they still in Clash? Yeah, I That was the last game. Oh. Oh, that was the last game? Wait, is Conquer Clash two rounds? The second round opponents oh. forfeit. I told you. I told you. Ah. Oh, lame. So they did get fifth. EZW gets fifth place, but we do have to oh, cast lame. his ARAM. Let's play after his Wait, ARAM. Wait, that team already? Hello? Yes. Next game already? Next team as in ra the Ram Ranch. Ram Rancher. Oh wait, what do you mean? Aren't they playing their third? I thought that was their second game. No, they surrendered. Yeah, there's, there was a forfeit. Yeah, there was a oh, forfeit. Oh, so they got fifth? Yeah, understandable. In the lower bracket, nothing matters. You don't win anything anyway. Right. <laughs> But one minute out, we gotta cast this ARAM. We gotta cast three games. So what? So as your ARAM specialist, what do you make of these team comps here? Well, no more curse. Uh, yeah, no more curse. <laughs> <laughs> we have the cage and the Karthus <laughs> on the enemy <laughs> team <laughs> with Talon. That's a that's three S tier champions right there. No, but they got they got an Nautilus. They got an Nautilus, but uh, hey. It's against the Vigar though, it's the scourge of Howling Abyss. Yeah, it's two... Okay, think it this way, it's two S tiers versus three S tiers. Wait, who's the, other, who's the second S tier? Uh, Lissandra. Oh, okay. I would qualify Lissandra as an S tier. Do you agree or not? <laughs> I think she's A+. Plus. Solid A+. a I, I wouldn't put her at Solid A+. Plus. I yeah. wouldn't put her at S. What's the abuse? What, what does Lissandra abuse? Uh, the Sound fact the that everyone's clumped up and you get passive chains. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, let's get let's get into this ARAM and, and cast it like it's a <clears> real <throat> game. Wow. Okay. Here we got Toe Tickler sixty nine on the Vega. <laughs> <laughs> what a interesting name. <laughs> Any comments? Nah. Comments? I'm good. Questions? Concerns? I'm good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alluring death. Uh -huh. Very uh -huh. nice name. That's a very edgy name. I, I must say. Yeah. yeah. On, the edge of, on the edge. On the edge. Alluring himself, death. Oh. Yeah. But what about Toe Tickler 269? That, that's not that very sounds... edgy, that's very uh... That's not edgy. What's the opposite know. of edgy? 
Just like we are camp. Cool. Big Eat sixty nine sixty nine. Alright, red team, they do take control of the brush. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna cage whoever right. Oh wait. It's a four v five, the Syndra's not in the game. Oh, the cage is coming out. Oh, oh no, no, the Nautilus, he's it? coming in, but he unfortunately finds himself a little bit too deep. First blood, but there oh. comes Alessandra. The There's no the claw. Ball. She can't get back out. Ooh, oh, dead. that's going to be two kills to zero to start it off. The Ari goes oh, down oh. as well. That's honey dude is honey dead. Oh, the Lissandra. Oh, Ooh. no, that's Lissandra, no oh, here comes the cage coming in. And just cage rocks on the center. Oh, the star. Oh, easy train. Death. Oh, flash double oh, flash oh, forward oh, for that Syndra oh, kill. Here comes Nautilus with the triple. <laughs> oh, Nautilus with the triple. Kill Shut on the down. Oh, 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 he's going in. Oh, that's no ball to the Vigar. <laughs> what a bloodthirsty air. <laughs> what a fiesta. Oh, one more hit will kill the Anivia. They do oh, get it. Oh. oh, the Ari. She can't make it out. Oh, Jinx gets excited. Oh, flash. Uh, look, can you take away that? Can you go back to the thing you five and seven? <laughs> That was team fight view, because you know, it's always a team fight. Oh, the talent does land the snowball, it's coming in, but the Lissandra Root snares him and plays the claw. She cannot take it, but Ooh. the talent will die. The first sprite ghost gets created. Oh, but he cannot oh. connect onto the Karthus. So far, we, got, we have a few feeders here on blue team. And the yeah. Vigar, he's got the tier, he's working on Archangels. He's got some pretty early kills, that's always scary. Mm. The cage. Oh, the cage. Oh, it locks up the Ari, but the charm! Ooh, it lands from a long range. The lay waste does kill her off. And the card this is even with spam. Oh, Talon coming in. Talon is coming in. Oh, the lock. This is stretch line. <laughs> that hook was. That was a BS hook. That was, <laughs> that was a huge lollipop. <laughs> Holy. Yo, know, Donald's hook is pretty BS sometimes. <laughs> Oh, the Karthus is taunting in place. Oh, Nivea get the stun. Oh, Anivia oh, E does Anivia not get the kill, and there's a very dead Anivia. But the Lissandra's next to go, along with the Nautilus. Kalissa's locked in the cage, she needs to try to get out. Barrier tries to save her own life, but can she get it? The defile is not kill. enough. The defile can't finish off the kill, but the Requiem oh, sure as hell can. <laughs> Shut down to the Kalista. Karthus gets himself the fifth kill. Vigar primordial oh. burst finishes off a one for one trade. It's just the Syndra oh, left alive against two. Oh no, that Ari got his toes tickled. <laughs> 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 Such a weird name. <laughs> Toe tickler. Maybe that's his fetish. Who knows? Yeah, that's so a very weird have... fetish. I don't know. Feet. Uh, surprisingly common. No, feet. feet uh, is not, not feet fetish. Toe tickling it's just, fetish. It's, it's only toes that's... though, not the feet. I mean, I that is like part of the feet. Kinda, kinda that's part of the feet. I feel like that's kind of related. Yeah, if like, some people with, like... Features, I'm sure they, like, tick, like, toads. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. The Syndra does get taken out. Oh, the Nautilus, oh. he does get saved oh. by a face call. The charm goes out onto the Karthus. Nautilus going back in, but the Lissandra... Oh, Lissandra cannot create the passive until Lay Waste is... Uh, not Lay Waste. That's the fight. It's over. And she is no longer in range. There's no Karthus Oof. Ghost. Ooh, the stun. The Glacial Storm slowing down the Ari, the poke, everything. Damage is too much. Red Team's team is too good. Uh, I told you. <laughs> Three S tier champions. <laughs> I feel like Ooh, just and Vagar alone. Anivia, <laughs> Vagar, Karthus. <laughs> Three S tier champions. Talon slowly fighting the Kalista. Ooh, he gets arted out. Out play button. <laughs> On the dead talent. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, the Karsus gets hooked in. Snowball does come in. There's the depth charge. It's gonna land on the Jinx. Flash forward by the Lissandra. She wants more, but she flashes into the edge of the horizon oh. and gets killed off by the Defile. A two for Can one. Follow up with that fight because of the event horizon. Yep. Oh. Toe Tickler does get killed off here, and the Long Distance oh. Charm, it lands onto Anivia, and there's no egg, so she will get killed off. Shut down by the Kalista. she's got 6 kills. She's actually decently strong, but she's oh, continuing. But the, the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket is coming back yeah, up. Too many big threats right now, Jinx. The rocket is coming up. The rocket is up. Uh oh. Show it, show it to us. Fire oh, it, fire it. Yeah, Come on. 
Oh, hello. There it is. Oh. 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 And you it. Unfortunate, unfortunate. <laughs> Shouldn't have held it that long, you know? Yeah. Just eat it out as soon as it comes up. She also had a clear line of sight of Senior earlier. You yeah. just have to smack onto someone, and you probably. I think she was, the she was waiting for the minions to die so they wouldn't have vision of her shooting it out. She went in the bush, though. Um. <laughs> she, yeah, maybe she wanted to add that on, but she she didn't want. To, when the moment she leveled, she had minions around her. She didn't want so to yeah, here's something else. Anivia has clarity. Yeah, she's yes, she's using yeah. it to. Sustain everyone. Oh, here comes. Oh, Carthus. but there's a good kill, but the Nautilus, Ooh. his exit has been denied. Face call, it just came back up. How unfortunate oh, is that? The Vyra goes in, Ooh. but he gets outplayed. Oh, the Flash Frost oh, stun. Oh, <laughs> the Flash Frost stun is there. The Lissandra coming in for the burst, but the Talon Shadow Assault is coming out. Everybody is so low. This is the easiest cleanup ever. One more hit will do it, but he can't find the triple kill. It's all he'll settle with. The Syndra still alive by the skin of her teeth, and there's a Requiem. There is no escape. There is no life. There's only death. Oh. Agony, ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here, here's a complication. Every passing has a beauty. All in its here's a pa here, here's a nice little competition. Imitate that voice as much as you can. Don't just say the line. Try to imitate it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, I gotta look up how Karthus sounds. Oh, oh Death Charge <laughs> is coming out. Face call, it pulls the Nautilus out of the cage. Drudge line onto the Karthus, but he's alone and he's dead for the seventh time this game. He's kind of feeding. Yeah. Just a little oh. bit. Oh no, the Callista! She dashed into the walls of the Event Horizon, taking so much poke! Ooh. And the Talon comes in with a stab to the face. The Death Rocket comes out as well, chunks the Ari to below half. A very unfortunate series smashed. of events. Paul is Nautilus. He's just going alone, but no one can follow up. Yep, the Anivia does it's get a... egged up. The Snowball does oh. land. Can they find yeah. the damage to connect? The Lissandra can start a few passives off, but no, she can only get oh. one! They trade one for one over and over. A three for two overall. Nautilus respawns. He's two levels below the Jinx. Just putting it out there. Oof. Dredge line misses, but he is zoning her off successfully. Oh, here wait. it comes! Here comes the auto! Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait, wait! Wait, wait, wait. 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 What? 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 Did I see that? What? 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 <laughs> the auto says Bork! <laughs> <laughs> I thought the Jinx Borked him, but it was the other way around! Oh my. What? What? <laughs> Insane! <laughs> Maybe that's why he keeps on dying. <laughs> What is he? I, I yeah, I saw play the rune kings. So I immediately logo to jinx items. Didn't see it. What? <laughs> that's a uh, that happened. Yeah. All right, twenty two to twenty eight. Blue team surprisingly holding against this relentless siege, and Ooh, the Anivia first to go. Lissandra passive might start a chain or something here, but the Nautilus he's so squishy he gets popped off immediately. <laughs> The cars is singing. Oh, the the Syndra with yeah, this. The damage is there, but the outplay can't find anybody. Can they get one? They do get the Jinx. So the Talon might be oh. in trouble. He tries to turn with some damage, but he can't find any. The tower shot okay. kills off the Syndra. The Lissandra's coming in. She naps the healing, but flashes Ooh. into the event horizon. <laughs> right into the event horizon. Lissandra trying to set something up. She's getting the spears in. If she can stack up a few spears on the cannon and drive it into the Vigard, that's a kill. Oh, she does go for the play and that gets it. I'm oh. a prophet. I'm a freaking prophet. I called it. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Oh no, it's slow. It's slow. Oh. Oh, the Talon, Ooh, it kills off the Nautilus. Talon. He's so incredibly squishy. He has a Kindle gem. And the item that we shall not name. Flash forward by the Callista. Oh, the Spear Rend is enough to finish it. What is Callista's, uh... Oh, she does have her ultimate. Yeah, but uh, too bad it's attached to the Nautilus. <laughs> oh, Ian. Oh, Alright, oh. a beautiful QSS. 
gets her out of it with zero lag time. And there's the Vigar. He's coming in for a kill, but he can't find any. The Lissandra passive sends him back out to his former allies. He does chunk out the Anivia for about 400 damage. But the Anivia, she's still sitting pretty... She doesn't actually have tier. She has Ludens. And now she's working on Rova, which is a pretty late Rova. This is a pretty inefficient build by her, all things considered. But there is the engage coming down. Lissandra self house to try to buy herself some time. That's the fight. Everybody is sitting on the file to fight. And the Requiem is coming down. This is gonna hurt. And it does hurt quite a bit. The Lissandra needs to finish off the talent, but she can't Ooh. find it. Syndra is the last survivor, preventing the ace. But she's just now running back from base. And surprisingly, blue team not completely bending over this game. However, they are going to find sieging excessively difficult. Even if the Anemia has bad items, she can still wave clear. And really, the hero of the story right now is the Karsus. Deathcap complete, Seraph's complete. He hurts <clears throat> so much. He hurts like heck. He hurts like heck. Heck if with uh, he was, two Cs. If only he bought a Dark Harvest instead of Comet. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, beautiful dredge line. It does connect on the crosses. He's the first to die, but at the final damage, everything is there. He's gonna take two people down with him. That's worth it. I will say, Comet is better than the time I accidentally went Electrocute Karthus. But uh, Electrocute Karthus will work now because uh, it's E proc four times as often. There's no, but it's four different abilities, isn't it? Three different Wait. abilities, but now you can actually do it with a. Uh, now you can actually you do it with auto QE because your E ticks oh, okay. in a quarter um, seconds instead of one. You just have to auto them. Yeah. yeah, you just have to auto them. Now it's slightly <laughs> more possible. <laughs> you just have to auto them. It's yeah. fine. Lissandra does I get know. taken out here in the one for one. This Kalista is actually super fed. Is she fed enough to kill everybody here? Nope, the Ooh. Pierce plus the Rend is not enough to finish it. Uh, she does have the QSS to get herself out, but the Death Charge is coming in onto the Karsus. He doesn't have Requiem, but the Defile Tick is so fast. It's hitting onto the Kalista. She's out of the fight. The Syndra tries to outplay somebody, but the Ari and Syndra will both die in the interim. It's 36 to 43. The Kalista's still alive, though. Yep, Kalista wastes out the death to fight, and now she's back into the action. The dredge line from long range, oh. from downtown, it connects. That's gonna be a very, very scrambled egg. Rend now. Oh, okay. the auto. Yeah. The BM. The BM. The lifesteal is coming out now. Kalista can heal herself back. Right now, all the major threats are dead. This is their prime time to push to try to kill a tower. But nope. Their time Ooh. in the sun is over, and the Callista oh. gets bursted out of the world. The Nautilus quick to follow, and the Karth is chasing after him with the talent, but the rest of the cavalry have arrived. It's the Ari, it's the Syndra, but the cavalry's horses are crippled. They're being slaughtered. Oh. Ari is the first to die. Lysandra is on the ground next. The orbital strike comes in from the Karth's Requiem, chunks the Syndra to about half. They've only killed one in the retreat. The Vigar is tanking a few tower shots, but now it's just the Syndra left alive. She gets rooted by the Flame Chompers, and now the Karz is in the back. He's killing the minions, and oh. he's killing the Syndra. He does get killed <laughs> off by the tower. But Lissandra... <laughs> not Lissandra, but the Callista and the Nautilus, they're both back up. They need to try to make something happen. Can they save the Inhib? No, they cannot. The dredge line is not there. The Inhib has fallen. The Supers are coming in now. And just as a reminder, on ARAM, minions spawn twice as fast. It's gonna be 15 seconds per mini wave past a certain point in the game. I believe it was like 8 minutes. Now every 15 seconds, they're gonna have to contend with a super minion. It's gonna be an immense amount of map pressure coming in. Did I say 15 minutes? Or 15 seconds? 15 seconds is what I meant. The Talon is the first to die in this team fight. The Vigar trying to make a play oh, happen, but the Dark Matter <laughs> so <laughs> far. Whoa! The Dark Matter gets dropped snowball. so far. I didn't even have Snowball on Vigar. Oh, the Syndra. She's gonna walk in. Oh, but the Karsus snipes out the Nautilus with a lay waste. Now he's running for the hills. It's still a four on three for now, but the Anivia, that wave clear potential is so huge.
Oh, Carthus, he's gonna get stunned up and even the, 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 uh, the sound are gonna claw in to try to kill someone. The Callista in the back, shredding everybody. The Ari will be the first to go. The Jinx is on the Shred of Life. The damage is coming down, but the Syndra can't quite find it. It's the Talon. The Shadow Assault, it pulls into the Callista. She's taking so much damage. Now she has to try to flash away. The Spears going into the Supers. <laughs> the Vigar just wants to get the arm. Slowly <laughs> waddling <laughs> forward. <laughs> It's a train he of death. He wants to press R. He wants to press R. You know, he just wants to suck those toes. Tickle. Tickle. Tickle suck, yeah. Tickling and they, sucking are two they, very different things. Hey. For foot fetishes. Fetishists. I bet, I bet he also enjoys sucking toes. Yeah, I'm death. pretty sure this guy, this guy's a... A man of, uh... Culture. Interesting taste. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know about culture. I wouldn't use culture here. I, I wouldn't use that word. <laughs> the most degenerate group of people that can still be considered men of culture are Viaboos. I will not go any lower than that. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. The Requiem is uh, coming uh, in. Uh, oh, it kills the Ari. Oh my god. It kills the Ari straight up. Oh, Syndra's at Event Horizon. The foot fetish is the most common fetish. Is it? Yeah, I, definitely. Is there a survey definitely. for that or something? I'm pretty sure. Are, are foot fetishes below weeds? In terms of social standing, yes. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know about that. Let me do Maybe it's stuff. because I've never I'm seen any really cringe weebs. Most common. All right, here we go. In the U.S., so you know it's accurate. <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh, the Vagar presses are on the Nautilus for the outplay and the Dark Matter. Every defender is being dropped, and Blue Team they're down to one Nexus. They have nothing left. 6,000 gold ahead for red team right now. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto the Karthus. He might just die right now, but the cage Ooh, is locking up everyone. The They've been there's locked into the file. And they just get to sit this one out. The Syndra hits the outplay button. Is it enough? No, it's not. What Dark Spear smacks onto the Talon. Bonks him silly. And here comes the Death Rocket. Oh, it does connect. But the Nautilus Death Charge is here. Make use of your Blade of the Rune King. Oh, now the Dredge Line oh, completely wait, whips. Wait, but the wait. Snowball lands. The Anivia gets egged. Time to swing your anchor like you mean it. And there is why, the Scrabble Why did egg. he do Bork into full tank? I thought he was I thought he was going to end or something. What's I the Bork the for? I think the team probably called him out. Uh, definitely <laughs> don't go Blade of the Rune King on Nautilus. You have the lowest attack speed ratio possible. I well, not the lowest, but them. very low. You would make very poor use like, of attack hey, speed. Why are you building Blade of the Rune King? Oh, why not? <laughs> and he's like, damn, I don't have it. Work Wits End Static Shiv? There yeah. You go. That's a viable build on anybody. <laughs> As if he followed through with that build, he didn't. Oh, true. <clears throat> I don't know about anybody. You can't do that on Elise, <clears throat> for example. <clears throat> Wait, 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 wait. You, you're not okay with that on least, but you're okay with it on Nocturne? Oh, it's like on, on... Ooh! On I mean, at least Nautilus Still can lock people down for longer. No. At least, at least has the attack speed buff from her W. Yeah. When he's fighter form. I think at least does that build better. Alright, you do that build then. <laughs> this is the dare. Alright! Alright, I will! Attack speed Ooh. at least! Ooh. Oh, the face call, it's gonna throw in the Nautilus. Vigar deleted Lissandra. You mean oh, outplayed Lissandra? That's the. Oh, here comes the. Oh, the red appears. Everything. The, the damage is there. But oh, the, oh, the Callista <laughs> on a shred of life. She's life stealing. But the Jinx oh. runs her down. Can I dodge the autos? Can, can they I still hold this? Is the Ari the snowball oh. landed? She can do this. The Wait. spirit rush is oh. coming oh. forward. She needs the damage to land, but she can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jinx out life steals and oh, this takes her down. What a blunder. What a blunder. Oh, wait, they're not ending? Yeah, they're not ending. Oh, blunder. 
Uh-oh. To blunder. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Oh. Oh. To blunder. Oh, she walked out of the auto. There's a there's a lot of minions in this base. Oh. Come on, Nautilus. Swing, Swing your anchor. Swing your anchor like you meant it. Use Swing that after. Him. Why do you have aftershock if you want Blade of the Rune King? Yeah, he's got conquer. There's the orbital strike. It kills him off. And the talent coming in to clean oh. house. That minion charm though. Oh Calista my. has respawned. She's got 23 kills. She's nearing the Kaisa threshold. Then again, the Kaisa threshold doesn't count on uh, Aram. Only counts on Summoner's Rift. That's the rule. What is the, the Kaisa threshold? Getting 26 kills. Why does Why? the uh, Kalista? Because Kaisa look... counts the number of kills she gets up until 26. <laughs> Why does the Kalista look tankier than the Nautilus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, frozen Matter will do that, I guess. Interesting. Oh, but she can't Frozen Matter her way out of this one. Oh, he's stuck! Oh, no, he's oh, he is stuck and the oh, anchor oh. is coming! Oh, the anchor man, let's lose! Oh, the fast speed anchor! <laughs> oh, flash oh, dredge light! Like, dude, oh. oh, You're a little too short there. A little bit too short. Oh, but this could be a turn? So yeah, Kai'Sa has waistlines for every kill she gets, up until 26. That's the Kai'Sa threshold, getting 26 kills. Oh! Like yep. Oh, what was that? What was that QSS? Oh, that was a very bad QSS. <laughs> Could it be that a spark of life is happening? Or maybe 27 it, should be true. the... Maybe 27 should be the threshold, because she still has a waistline at 26, and then stops after that. No, I think 26, because then you've heard it all after 26. Okay, yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, we'll still put oh. it at 26. Oh, no! Oh. The I feel like I feel like that's not what you do as Vagar. That's not what that you do. Yeah, the one survives on a shred of life. <laughs> Wait, this tower still alive? Yes, this tower still. Well, it's a Nivea. You can't push into that. <laughs> yeah. Look, Nivea just turned away. Anivia just presses R and your siege is over. Champions like Anivia and Vagar are why I want Aram specific balance nodes to also include mechanics changes, not just number changes. Mm, but then it's not like the same game anymore. I know, that's that's why they won't do it, but like, I really want it because, you know, things like this happen. Or yeah. then you just have ARAM bans, so you know. Yeah. I would support uh, ARAM bans. Oh, oh the, the Kalista barely the wins it. Oh, my. oh, she has a hell of a task ahead of her. She needs to out life steal this talent. Can she do it? Right. Oh, the yeah. talent is pouncing in. The stun is there. Syndra with her last press gets a stun oh, and the trace one for one. Logan, how much damage does that Vega all do right now? Click on him. Uh, how much AP does he have? He's got 1059 AP, so that's that much damage. Okay, okay. So how much damage does the Karthus all do? That's what I want. Alright, uh, let's click on the Karthus. 1100. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, the respawn timers are coming in again for Blue Team. They're living to fight another day. Kalista has triple lifesteal. She sold uh, Frozen Mallet for BT. Interesting. Is she elixir up? She is. So that's four lifesteal sources. Yo, they're playing ranked after. Yo, we gotta see that. We gotta spectate. We gotta. I'm not commentating cast. anymore past this. <laughs> oh, my voice needs a break. This is the third that's game a, of Crash. Oh, they're playing ranked? Yeah, they're playing ranked. This, Addy said oh, they wanna play one ranked. It's okay, we won't commentate, Build we'll synergy. just spectate. We'll just spectate and uh, just talk. So. Yeah, we'll watch, we'll watch. Yeah, you don't need to commentate, you can but, just uh, My voice is already going on. I, commenting that Aram was a mistake. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, don't commentate, don't worry don't, about it. This, this was commentate. a mistake, my voice is going. Me, John, and Mo will go at this. <clears throat> cough, cough. Oh, the car says he's gonna get stunned up, but here comes the talent. Threatening the backline, Shadow Assault comes up, he gets locked up by the Lissandra. He needs to try to make his way out, he does get out. In the nick of time. Oh. Dredge line. Oh. The oh, but the Anivia. Oh, the CC slapping down, but no one's there to take it. Event Horizon plus Anivia and the Requiem damage. Oh, kaboom. Oh my god, Ooh. Ari. Oh my god, Ari. Ari is just uh, not having Ari enough day. 
Oh, the lasagna? comic could have yeah. killed her. That's yeah, true. I'm surprised Arya did not build lasagna. He's going for the. Is that. <laughs> that's less than 50 health. Like, what's Ari's the point of being alive? Arya's died to Karthus multiple times during this game. You're going for a void staff at this point. <laughs> Oh no, their backline carries are too low, the talent, he's gonna get one, he might get two, ooh, field goal for the Death Rocket. Yikes. This is the final stand, they need to win this. But it seems like the hope is very tiny right now. They can't do it, they can't do it, Red Team has had enough, they finished toying with their food. No. They're going for the end, right, maybe? Right? That they're ending, right? I believe so. I don't see how they do that. Oh, okay, yeah, oh. they ending. Oh my gosh, just hit the dang nexus. No one's gonna respawn in time. Alright, there it is. There it is. There's the loss. And that concludes the clash coverage. Conquer Cup Day 2. We'll see you next time.